There's me, 25 female, sister, 27, and brother, 28, involved here. We were raised together, and until 2019, we believed we were a nuclear biological family. Then, we found out our dad wasn't our bio dad, which even he didn't know. It then turned out my older siblings shared a bio dad, but I had a different one. We were also first cousins because their bio and my bio were brothers. Dad left our mom hurt, betrayed, and overall disgusted that she'd lied to him for two decades. I was equally mad that she lied and hurt my dad. My siblings were less willing to cut her off, but their relationship strained majorly. Dad moved in with me and my then-boyfriend, now fiancé, and pandemic hit. At this point, all siblings agreed he was our dad no matter what, and there was nothing that could change that. I meant it, they didn't. They found their bio father and mine by extension, and have decided that he is now real dad and that our dad is just a stepdad. My brother has even corrected his two little girls who called dad grandpa into saying he's step-grandpa and that's what they call him, while bio gets called grandpa. It broke my dad's heart and he decided it was too much for him to accept. This is after talks between them where he was essentially told to know his place, stay in his lane and demoted with a clear message being nothing would change. I am so angry at them. They've tried to push me to meet my real dad and have told me it's okay to go back on what we said. Initially, they were invited to my wedding, but with this whole mess, I told them they were no longer welcome and I didn't want them to show up. They told me that just because they have a relationship with their real dad doesn't change things between us. I told them it does. That if dad isn't our real dad after everything he's done for us, then we're not real siblings because technically we're half-siblings and cousins. That my dad is still my dad 100% and biology is meaningless to me and so it was best for them not to come because I no longer want them there. What I said hurt them. My sister-in-law, married to my brother, told me I was an idiot for throwing half in their faces and cutting them from my wedding like we haven't been siblings our whole lives. I think that's almost more annoying to me because that's our dad, but he can be taken advantage of and discarded like he's nothing. Am I the idiot? My sister-in-law told me I was an idiot for throwing half in their faces like we haven't been siblings our whole lives. But didn't your dad raise them their whole lives, and they've just dismissed everything he's done because your mom lied? Essentially, it's your wedding. You can invite and disinvite who you want. Not the idiot, OP. I'm sorry for this mess. That line made me so mad. That's exactly what her siblings did to their dad. You used their exact reason against them and it hurt them, and still it didn't click with them. Outrageous that 20 plus years of sacrifices and love can be thrown away and the love given to a guy who didn't do anything except sleep with a married woman. Sister-in-law and siblings can sit their butts back down with their hypocrisy. OP, your dad is lucky to have a daughter like you. Congrats on the wedding. Wait, so why is the father being punished when the mother cheated and lied about it for 20 years? Your siblings gave the title of dad to someone who wasn't in their life that entire time. It's fair that they want to contact their biological father, and it's fair if they still want a relationship with their mother, but to treat the man who raised them with such disrespect is nasty. I'm guessing their magnanimous attitude towards their mother is due to the fact that they favour her over your dad. Unpopular opinion, clearly, but you are the idiot. It's their choice who they call dad or stepdad, and they need to sort through their own emotions about it. Weddings are for family, and you have the chance to heal so many of these divisions. Yes, mom did do a dirty on dad, but should that cause a huge rift to tear the rest of the family apart? If you're willing, why not try to be the healer? Don't lose your siblings, OP. I can't understand why any reasonable adult, bride, would be expected to invite adults who treat her father like garbage to her wedding. OP has the right to cut toxic, cruel people from her life. Half-siblings have made their choices. OP is entitled to make hers, regardless of how her dad feels, even. I, 30 female, am married to a woman, 28, and we have an 8-month-old. My brother and his wife, 34-32, have two kids, a young teen male and a young female. We used to be close, but they joined a church when my nephew was young and our relationship changed. We haven't really talked much for about six years. My wife and I are financially stable and help the family in whatever way we can. We'd never felt taken advantage of until this situation with my brother and sister-in-law. We buy clothes and school supplies for both kids and pay for nephew's summer camp and private lessons for various interests. 
Last spring, when I shared the news of our pregnancy, I got a lengthy message from my brother letting me know that they could no longer support my lifestyle, and while they loved me and hoped I'd change my mind, I was no longer welcome in their home. They didn't want to confuse the kids. It's not the kids' fault, so I still paid for all the usual stuff last year. I'm supposed to pay for camp this summer, but they've decided to send him to their church's camp instead. It costs double. They didn't ask if I was willing or able to pay more. I normally wouldn't mind, but why would I want to pay for him to be taught my lifestyle is sinful? I messaged them and said that they should have asked me before changing his plans and budget for camp. They said they didn't need my permission to send him to church camp. I said that should mean they don't need my money either. My brother tried to convince me that it would benefit my nephew. They already promised him and he would be disappointed since they can't afford it. I do feel terrible for my nephew, but I don't think they should have promised him anything before talking to me. Two days ago, he called to see if I'd reconsider, but I stood firm. He said I shouldn't take whatever resentments I have towards him and his wife on his kids. I said it goes both ways. If they have a problem with my wife and me, my daughter is innocent. Does he even know her name? Birthday? What does she look like? Has he ever asked? After a long silence, he said, Come on, OP, you know it's not the same. She isn't even actually related to you. Nephew is your blood, and you guys were always so close when he was little. He misses you. I hung up and have been crying since. My wife and I talked and are considering cutting them off and putting the money I usually spend on them into a college fund instead. My mom says I have every right to be angry at my brother, but should reconsider for my nephew's sake. It's not his fault and he won't understand. He'll think, now I have a daughter, I don't care about them anymore. I do feel terrible about it, but I'm at a loss. So, am I the idiot? I'm so lost and confused and don't know how to proceed. Not the idiot. Use that money for your daughter. I had to do this with my very own brother for different reasons, but it boiled down to my love for the kids not being enough to justify having to deal with them. No matter how much money I spent on those kids, they still grew up to resent me because of what their parents said about me, because I wasn't physically present in their lives. So, you're not welcome in their lives, but your money is? I wouldn't pay for any child to be indoctrinated into bigotry. Put the money into a college fund and ignore your brother. His children may need help one day if they don't live up to the standards of mom, dad and church. Can you imagine what will happen if one of their kids is anything that they consider not normal and godly? I shudder at that thought. Exactly. Besides, if their lifestyle is so incredibly sinful, they should realize how dirty that money is. Which, in that case, go ahead and pay for the nephew's church camp and make sure the church knows that the nephew's lesbian aunts paid for it with their lesbian marital funds. Yes, that's right, because only the lesbians can afford to save poor nephew's souls from damnation. My fiancé and I are getting married in September. My fiancé's sister just found out her husband and father of their three kids has been cheating on her for the past two years, and he left the house and they're getting a divorce. My sister-in-law is very distraught by this since she's been with him since they were 19. They're 34 now. Since they're getting a divorce, now everyone from my fiancé's side of the family demands that we cancel our wedding to show solidarity and support to my sister-in-law. They also believe it would be improper to celebrate while my sister-in-law is getting divorced and left alone with three kids. My sister-in-law also demands it and says that there are no ifs and buts and the wedding is getting cancelled and it's the respectful thing to do. While I truly feel for her and her situation, I don't understand what our wedding has to do with it and how cancelling it will help her feel better. I understand that being at a wedding will feel bittersweet, but her divorce and our wedding are two separate occasions and I don't feel like we should cancel anything. My fiancé agreed on everything and was the first one to say how it's completely unreasonable to cancel our wedding. My sister-in-law and my fiancé's parents think we are being extremely selfish and inconsiderate. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, but what a weird family. Let me guess, sister-in-law is the golden child? And your fiancé is the scapegoat, isn't he? No one else can have things if his sister is under stress. Oh man, that's a seriously toxic sibling dynamic. I'm sorry you have to deal with that. Her request is wild. If your in-laws are backing her, some major boundaries will need to be set to protect your family. Unfortunately, it sounds like your fiancé does not get any support from his family. My god, OP say, How dare you get divorced when I'm getting married? I demand you cancel your divorce. If sister-in-law is that distraught over someone else getting married, then I think she needs therapy. 
I'm never one to support cheating, but the reason for sister-in-law's husband wanting a divorce is becoming clear. Reading this makes me wonder if you even need your sister-in-law at your wedding. Maybe just uninvite her and celebrate your wedding with the people that want to celebrate your love. Problem solved. Sister-in-law doesn't have to interrupt her tough times to attend your wedding. Of course, I'm only being half sarcastic here. But they didn't suggest they put it on hold. They didn't ask for a postponement. They asked for a cancellation. They want him to never get married because his sister's marriage is ending. Makes me wonder, if bro had already been married, would they have asked him to get divorced in solidarity? Misery demands company. OP, tell us, was sister-in-law's husband cheating with you? Because that would be the only reason to cancel your celebration. Honestly, I think you should cut your fiancé's family out of your life since they're just using and walking all over you and your fiancé. Let his family deal with her entitlement and see how long they'll last without him being the buffer. Legally, he's only my son now, but I'll, 31 male, explain. My ex-wife and I divorced after she got pregnant with my son Tyler. Ever since we both met and started our relationship, we've been on the same page about being child-free. For me, that changed when she found out she was pregnant. She was still on board with not having a child and wanting to terminate, but I started having doubts. We talked about it many times until we realized we were no longer on the same page. She didn't go through with terminating, but she wanted to give him up for adoption instead, but I opposed that and agreed to raise him myself. That spelled the end of our relationship because she didn't want a child in our lives. We filed for divorce, then once he was born I had full custody of him and raised my son as a single father. After my wife came into the picture and legally adopted him after we married, I had nothing to do with my ex. Until last year, she's been messaging me wanting to talk about seeing Tyler, but I already told her he has a mom already, so let us be. Since both my wife and I work, Tyler, pre-K, has a sitter, Kara, a friend of mine who stays with him during the day. She was a mutual friend of my and my ex-wife, but she didn't have contact with her until after the divorce, or that's what I thought. One of my friends told me she knows Kara has been updating my ex about Tyler for a couple of months because she brought it up to them once since she felt bad doing this behind our backs, but also felt guilty that my ex can't see Tyler anymore even if she signed away her rights and now regrets it. I was so furious when I confronted Kara about it. She showed me all their messages. None of it was saying where we live or pictures of him, but telling her what he ate, his favorite books, etc. But I was still angry she told her things about my son behind my back. I told her to get out, but now she's begging me to give her a chance and she will completely delete my ex's contact and block her because she really needs this job and it'll look bad to her future job opportunities. Since then, my mom started to watch him instead. I told her why, so she's the one telling me it wasn't right to fire her without giving her a chance to change. Also, she can understand her point of view. My ex no longer has access to my son and feels like a desperate mother. It's just really hard to understand why I'm the bad guy for not wanting anyone talking to my ex about my son just because she had a change of heart. My friend keeps begging me to give her another chance and even some friends thought outright firing her instead of coming up with a different solution was over the top. It's hard because she was a good friend before finding this out. Am I the idiot? Ex signed away her rights. That child isn't hers. She isn't his mother. So not the idiot. The sitter was giving updates about your son to someone without your consent. That is a betrayal of trust. There's no way I would give her a second chance on God's green earth. Deleting social media contacts is no guarantee that information won't be passed on. She breached the father's trust. Sometimes you cannot come back from that. Everyone's the idiot here. I completely understand where you're coming from and why it would be a complication for you for her to get to know her bio son. However, what I think you should consider is how your son will feel about this when he's older and finds out. I worry that even if he loves you and your wife very much, when he finds out, because it's when not if, that he has a bio mom, who has wanted to be involved in his life for years but you hid from him and didn't let contact him, that he'll be very upset. It could damage the trust you built with your son. It could make your ex look like the victim. It could make your ex look like cool forbidden fruit, greener grass over a fence. Valid points, but you're missing the biggest one. She signed away all rights. That's not an oops, I didn't know what I was doing. It was such a hard line for her that they divorced. Suddenly, she wants to play mommy? Um, no. That time was when she found out she was pregnant, not now. He isn't a toy you can throw away and pick up when you feel like it. 
and the babysitter is done. Finito. Caput. Forget about it. She betrayed his trust and put his son in a dangerous position. Zero chances were given. She chose poorly. Let her live with the consequences. My wife, 27, and I, 31 male, will have our first kid, a baby girl, together in early June. We're both very excited about it. She doesn't have any other kids, but I do. I have two boys from my first marriage, and my ex and I share custody and co-parent really well. My ex and wife get along well, which I thank my lucky stars for. My wife and I were talking about only having the boys here for the weekends in June until the baby has settled in. My wife wanted this. My ex has cancer and has just started chemo. The issue now occurred when my ex came to pick up the boys on Wednesday and asked if the boys could stay with me over the summer during the week and she could take weekends. Currently, we alternate weekends. She will have to start a more aggressive course of chemo and 1. doesn't want the kids to have to see it like that and 2. isn't sure how much she'll even be capable of taking care of them. I told her I wanted to help her and taking the boys was the least we could do. My wife was there and said she didn't love the idea, but my ex literally begged and my wife rolled her eyes and said, fine, but if they don't behave, we'll give them back. I told my ex not to worry and that I'll, we'll, take great care of the boys. After they left, my wife called me an idiot saying that my ex and I concerned her, that I was making her so very stressed and she didn't need two savages in her home right before she gave birth and right after and how I know she wants a home birth, which can still happen because the boys can go to either their mom or either of their grandparents. So, am I the idiot for putting stress on my pregnant wife? Not the idiot. Their mom literally has cancer. And excuse me, but did she literally call your children savages? Sounds like as soon as her bio child is born, she's going to turn into the wicked stepmother OP. This is a huge red flag. This language shows how she truly feels about your children. Your ex isn't dumping the kids on you. She's battling cancer, and by taking the boys, you're helping them and their mother in her fight for life. Your wife needs to wake up, even if it is selfishly. If your ex dies, you will have the boys 100% of the time. Going against the grain to say, no idiots here. Your wife could give birth at any time. She's hormonal, probably very uncomfortable, has a million things running through her mind, and is probably anxious about the delivery and nervous about becoming a 24-7 mom, not just when you have custody time. I really hope you're taking time off for a couple of weeks to help her. She will need it regardless of the additional children being there. <laughs>